going to read to you another story from my new book. This one's called Terminal. The old man thumbed through his retiree brochure one more time. Migrations. He liked the title. That was exactly what he saw himself doing, headed south like the geese used to do, going back to a place before this winter his life had become. He couldn't have told anyone who asked how long he'd been waiting there at the terminal. People came, sat down around him for a while, then got up and went away. The bravest in the crowd might smile and speak. Most acted as if they couldn't see him, as if they weren't there. Nobody ever tried to sit in his chair, though, so he figured they could see him. The young ones especially pretended not to. He reckoned they saw all folk like him as akin to sculpture or a potted plant, something with no particular function beyond taking up a space, imposing a boundary on free movement of the fit and able-bodied. He wasn't really all that old by current standards, though he thought of himself that way. His wife, the one soul on earth he'd shared much understanding with, long dead now. His self-absorbed children, immersed in lives in other countries where he had no place and couldn't speak the language. In fact, he hadn't spoken to his children in any language for years, though sometimes they remembered to send a card on his birthday. Even his Jesse had left him last winter. Fibrosarcoma. The vet said he'd used way too much of his pension keeping her alive until it was obvious being aware was a burden to her. Then he let the vet put her down. He wouldn't prolong her suffering just to escape being lonely. Under the new law, he wouldn't be allowed to keep a dog now in any case. So he had no connection. To anyone with breath anymore, he had achieved the ultimate stage of growing old, to be alone in the world. He thought it must be a lot like being dead, except the heart still pumped and the lungs still heaved and the worn out body still hurt and hungered. Faster souls had to step impatiently around him in the grocery. The hardest part the knowledge of being useless to the living. A very young woman in a green smock was talking to him. Mr. McNair, John? Oh, yes, John said, almost surprised that he still had a name in the world. That's me. She smiled, warm and healing, as if she were John's mother. Green woman seemed so young. He felt like a little boy. It's your time, John, she said, taking his arm to steady him as he stood. Are you sure you're ready now? Oh, yes, ma'am, John answered. I've been ready for a while.